Um, don't get don't get upset if you don't get a lot of the picky uh, as much picky time as you want. What I what I always do every class is um, Wednesday Thursday at least. I'll, I will roll these out. They may be out on the blacktop. I might bring them in here. I will have them accessible to you guys with a set of tools so that at lunchtime you could eat, come over, maybe pick for 15 minutes, whatever. You, during the course of the day, you won't have time. Lunch breaks, going to be your opportunity. Um, it is what it is, okay? All right, so we'll start right here. Two speed. Looking at this door, which way is it open? Right to left, left to right? Right to left. Okay, very good. Instant door opens first. <clears throat> On these older style um, elevator doors, the pickup rollers, those black wheels, are about 12 inches from the top and about 10 or 12 inches from the opening side. So right in this area is the ballpark of where you're gonna find those pickup rollers and then that locking arm goes straight up from those. Okay? All right, so. If you, so, so it's crowded, but just do your best to stand on this side while I'm talking, make your way around the back. What's really nice about having props like this is that they're a fantastic training prop for you guys because you can see everything that we talked about while you guys are picking. You can watch your buddies picking while you're on the back side. You can see what they're doing well, what, they're, what they need to do different, okay? So just walk both sides. I'll do the I'll do the skills a couple times, video, pictures, whatever you need. If you come around the back here, you guys, you will see everything that we had in the PowerPoint. <coughs> You've got your two-speed arm, attaches the two doors together. You got the black pickup rollers. You got the flat stock locking arm that goes up to the lock head. Lock head goes in the lock box. This lock box is where you have energized electrical. Okay, so again, you should, you'd be hard pressed to get a tool in there, but you should never be having a tool on the doors with them energized anyways, okay? You've got the wheels, two wheels per door. They travel in the top track. On the bottom, you got two gib blocks per door that just slide in this bottom slot track, okay? So again, everything that you saw in the PowerPoint, you got here. This, this gap between the two wheels when these are pinched together, that is what lifts the locking arm and unlocks the lock so that the door can open and then close. Okay, while you're on these props today, please, as the door is closing, put your hand on it. Do not let the door slam for me. Okay, all good so far? All right, top pick, we'll start with top pick. Again, I'm not here to sell you guys tools, but I will, okay? But, top pick, great idea to just have one of these in your pocket. Feel free to take it, scribe it on a piece of paper, you can make your own if you want to, okay? All right, but top picking skill, I would recommend that you start, start the same way every time. Take your top pick, send it up in the middle of the door, turn it so that my tool is resting on the top of the door just like that. Okay, so the, the tip of it is, is pointing straight back right now. Okay, I'm gonna go towards the opening. First thing that I hit should be that locking arm. From the pictures and from what you just saw, that locking arm is flat stock material. How wide is it? About half an inch. So I'm gonna bump it, and then what I do, you guys, is I bump it, I turn my tool like this, and I come around it and back on it. You should be able to identify, you should be able to tell yourself, oh yeah, that's about half an inch, okay? I come back on it and I go, yeah, that's it. If I kept going, I would hit what? That wheel, and that wheel is four, five, six inches wide. There's a lot of body to it that you wouldn't be able to twist your tool back around, okay? So I come on back on the locking arm. I am on the opening side of the locking arm where I want to be, okay? I keep my tool in an upright vertical position. I keep it pointing straight out. Take your index finger, run your index finger up onto the neck of the tool. It gives you a little more support. I go from a vertical position to a 45. I do not twist the tool side to side. It is straight pointing out. I go to a 45 degree angle. I push straight up. 
you will hear that bell say, that is the lock. Unlocking and locking. Hold it, unlock. Other hand goes on the door. You open the door. Boot goes in the corner. Close the door back up on your boot. Open the door. When you open these doors, take a wedge out of your kit. Wedge it in between. Wedge it to the threshold. And you'll hold the doors open. Okay? One more time. Do not let the door slam. I go up in the center of the door. I turn it. It's resting on top of the door. I come towards the opening. First thing I hit should be what? Locking on. How thick is it? Half an inch. I'm going to bump over it, come back on it. Okay? Now, finger goes on the neck of the tool. I keep the tool pointed straight out, but I go from vertical to a 45. Push straight up. Open the door. Close it up on your boot. Okay? Side pick. In my kits, at least, you got three sizes of these. Short, medium, long. Short <coughs> one is for the two speed because I'm not going around these two doors. I'm going in, in the middle. Okay? So when you look at the side picks that I make, you'll notice that one side is longer than the other. When I started fabricating these tools, I actually got in a bunch of elevators and measured how far the rollers are from the sides of the doors, and this is what I came up with. So there was some thought given to this, all right? The short side, as you, if you put the short side around the back of the door, you're gonna end up being very close to the black pickup rollers. You may have to just move the tool an inch or two, all right? But the long side is about four inches longer, and this tool is about four inches wide. So I can send the long side around the back. It's just, you gotta know that you're gonna have to slide the tool four inches more to actually make contact with the wheels, okay? Right, so I'd recommend you send the short side around the back. Tool positioning, very important. You start with the U at the bottom, okay? I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna go around the back of this door, so I'm sending it through the center gap, right? U at the bottom, tool goes around the back. I take it all the way up to a horizontal position. I still have, I still have the foot of this tool pointed straight out, which means that the other side of my tool is pointed straight out away from the door. I flip my side up, flips the back side down. My tool should now slide right down that flat pickup arm right to the wheel. I'm gonna come down nice and slow. How far down is my black wheels? About 12 inches down. How much lower is the back side of my tool than what I'm staring at right now? About four inches. So when you guys get about eight inches or so from the top of the door, you're right there, you should be there. With the length of this tool, it's not gonna flex a lot. So you will feel, I felt that I hit the wheel. Now that I hit it, my hand stays on the tool there. I slide in the direction the door opens. I popped off. So I start again, guys, right to the top. Do everything, start over, restart. Flip down, come on down, I'm on it. Popped off again. So on this particular prop, you will find that the short side, you're like right there and you may pop off. So let's send the long side around the back. All the way up, flip it down, I come down. Now I just gotta know that I gotta come to my left a little bit more. There I am. Hold it unlocked, open the door, boot goes in the corner, right this tool back around so that the U's at the bottom and it comes out. Okay, one more time. U at the bottom, goes around the back of the door, up to the top, horizontal, flip your side up, back side down. Come on down nice and slow. You will feel when you hit, stop, go straight to your left or in the direction that the door opens. Hold it unlocked, hand, other hand goes on the door, close it up on your boot, right the tool back around, you at the bottom, bring the tool out. Copy that? Okay, let's go over here to two speed or to the center opening. My center opening top six skill is going to be the same. I'm using the same tool. 
where am I going to most likely find my locks, my pickup rollers and stuff? Right, right hand door, very good, about 75% of the time. So start on the right hand door, okay? Top pick, same skill. Go in the middle of the door, turn it so your tool is resting, just like that, okay? I'm going to go towards the opening, towards the center. First thing I hit should be what? How thick is it? So I'm going to bump over it. I'm going to come back on it so I'm on the opening side of it. I go from a vertical position to what angle? 45. Run your index finger up to the neck of the tool. Push straight up at a 45. I can hear that I'm unlocking the lock. Hold it in the unlocked position. Hand goes on the door. Open it. Close it up on the boot, tool comes out. When you open center opening doors, you can wedge one side or the other and it'll hold the doors open. You don't have to wedge both sides, okay? You guys wanna see that again? Okay, one more time. Going up in the center of the door, I'm turning it, I'm resting on the top of the door. I come towards the opening. First thing I hit should be what? Locking arm, it's half an inch thick. I bump over it, I come back on it. I go from a vertical position to a 45 degree angle. I push straight up, I hold it unlocked. Right hand goes on the door, I open it, close it up on my booted foot in the middle, tool comes out, okay? Side pick. I wanna use my middle size side pick. This is called the Otis tool. Okay, have you guys ever been on an elevator rescue and it's, been, and it's a notice and the tech gets there and he's like, oh guys, this is a notice. This is not pickable. Have you ever heard that? Yes. It's, yes. Bullshit. it's bullshit. You, it's it's bullshit. bullshit. You need a computer. This is the deal. This is the deal. Otises have a desk cover on the back side at the top. That desk cover does not allow you to turn that top pick and travel along the top of the door. Well, what tool does the, uh, does the elevator guy show up with in his pocket? He has a top pick. He might have a Slim Jim for another brand, but he usually has a top pick with a bunch of pins in his pocket. He doesn't have this bad boy right here, okay? So Otis's are, you got a side pick in Otis, okay? All right, so I take my side pick. I'm gonna go around the right-hand side of the door if that's where my stuff is at. Again, short side around the back, you at the bottom, Send it around the back, send it all the way up, take it tight, flip your side up, back side down. I'm gonna come down, when I come about eight inches down, I will again, because of the length of this tool, I will feel when I hit something. So now I'm gonna travel straight in the direction the doors opens to the right. Bam, I hit it, hold it unlocked, take it, do not let go here. A lot of you, I'm left-handed, so I'm making this look easy. A lot of you are going to want to change hands here. And when you do, you're going to unlock the lock. So fight that urge. That stays there. Right hand goes on the door right here. Give it a push. Boot goes in the middle. Close it up on the boot. You may have to jiggle this loose a little bit. Right the tool back. You to the bottom. And bring it out. Okay? One more time. You at the bottom. Short side going around the back. Bring it all the way to the top. Take it tight, flip your side up, back side down. Bring it down nice and slow. You will feel when you hit something, stop. Travel to the right in the opening direction of the doors. I heard it click, hold it unlocked. Right hand goes on the door, open the door, close it on your boot in the middle. Right the tool back around, do not fight it, do not bend it, do not yank it. It'll feed right out, okay? Paddle tool. This is not going to be a perfect demo because we only have the lobby doors, not the inner car doors. Paddle tool. Fantastic tool. This should be your go-to tool if you have two things. Center opening doors only and the elevator car has to be in alignment in the landing zone. What that means is when I crease these doors open, I'm staring at those people in there, okay? The car is right behind your lobby doors. Now, that being said, it doesn't have to perfectly be behind. There's a little bit of give. There's a little bit of factor, fudge factor. The car can still be in alignment up to 18 inches above or below a lobby level. 
And the reason that is, is that on the face of the elevator car door, our car, as it travels up and down, it has a 36 inch long piece of thin metal that looks like a bayonet, okay? As the elevator car comes down to a lobby, that bayonet, if you will, and the door clutch will marry to those two black wheels on the back side of this door, okay? And they marry together. So, if an elevator car is coming down and you only get six inches of the end of that bayonet that attaches to those black wheels, they're married together and the doors can open and close, the four doors can open and close together, but when they do, that elevator car is gonna be like up this high, right? Have any of you guys ever gone to use an elevator and when the doors open, you're going, oh well, that elevator car is like four inches lower than it should be, or a couple inches higher, and you go, oh, oh, I don't care. You step right up in, and you go, hmm, is this gonna work right? That's what, they can still work, the doors will still open and close just fine, but the alignment may be a little bit off, okay? But as long as the doors are all married together, paddle tool will work great, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my paddle tool. For those truck paramedics in the group, I'm gonna pinch, oh, is it locked, Mark? Okay, so leave it, up, leave it locked. So I'm going to crease this open. I'm gonna send my paddle tool through the lobby doors. This skill works better the lower you go, and I can't tell you why. Um, it will work up here in the middle, but it works way better at the bottom, so I personally go about 12 inches from the bottom. I don't know if it's because you got less, less weight and restriction the doors down low, I, I, I don't know, but you're gonna pass the head of the tool through the lobby doors. You're gonna place that four inch head of the tool right in between the two car doors, the metal car doors. If those inner car doors, if you can visualize a plastic strip that's running the length of the door, that's your photoelectric eye, you do not want to compress that because you will shatter it, okay? So your tool should look like that on the inner metal car doors, which might be two or three inches in. Copy that. So you're going to be inside there like this. You're now going to turn your tool to the right, to the left, doesn't matter. As this as this tool head starts to open, you're probably not even going to get to the four inch opening. The doors are going to pop open like magic. It, it's like magic. And I can't, I can't tell you why it works. I can tell you that it works. Okay? I have asked a technician. I have had it. I have had a dude standing right behind me when I paddled doors open. And I turned to him and go, hey, bro, what, why did that just work? He goes, well, it, it, the, the sensors act, uh, you know, engage because it sensed that it was like, it, he goes, it was like when you put your arm in doors as they're closing and it makes contact with your arm and the elevator doors pop back open. He says, that's why, he goes, that's why it worked. Go, okay, I could see that if the power was on, but I'm like, the power's off right now and it worked. So why did it work? That's just, that's just how it worked. That's just how it works, you know. He, I don't know if he just didn't want to engage with me and tell me, or maybe he wasn't quite sure himself. This works really good, okay? Center opening doors, in alignment in the landing zone only. Again, power on, power off, it'll work. I just recommend that you always make sure your people power everything off for safety, okay? All good with that? All right, let's go to the side opening. Oh, I'm sorry. All that muscle protects you. Thank God. Well, they are—they are depending on each other. They're married together. I—I I, I just don't know what—I just don't know what triggers them to then pop open. I don't know what triggers them to disengage the lock. I don't—I've never had somebody explain to me real well. Okay, so side up, side opening here, you guys. This is this tool is bent to hell like this for a good reason. This this top pick is very challenging. It is unlike the others. Okay? <clears throat> because of this prop, I started making this longer top pick. So it's the same top pick, but it has an extra inch and a half on the end of it because you need more reach. When I had this prop built and I realized it was a it was built a little differently, I realized, well. If they built me this prop, these doors are probably in buildings. 
And so I need to make sure that you guys have a tool to use. So I just made a longer top pick. If you were to look at the back side of this door compared to the other two, the components are there, they're the same. You got the pickup rollers, you got the locking arm. But if you look at the back of those two, those locking arms are not blocked by the wheel brackets. If you look at this one, the lock, the wheel bracket, I'm sorry, the locking arm goes right up behind the wheel bracket and it's blocked by the wheel bracket. Okay? So, skill. You would start, you would not know that, and you would start with your same skill. You would probably be starting a two with a shorter pick, and I could pick with my shorter one, but I've done this a lot you guys would really struggle. So this is gonna still be hard, but you need this tool. Skill's gonna be the same. I'm gonna go in the middle of the door. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna rest it. I'm gonna go towards my opening. And the first thing that I hit, I would expect to be what? Locking arm, how thick is it? Good, so I try to go by it, and I would realize I can't turn my tool. I can't flip back around it. There's more there. I'm probably hitting the wheel bracket. So on this particular prop or door, you guys, you've got to take your top pick in the corner. And now I can turn it and rest it. I'm going to come all the way to my right as far as I can. I'm going to end up hitting the wheel bracket. Hit the wheel bracket. Let the tool drop down on top of the door. Now I want to come to my left like a quarter of an inch, and there's a bolt head there. I'm going to rest my pick right on top of that bolt head. Over here, I was having you guys go to a 45. You don't go to a 45 on this, on this door. I wanna keep my tool vertical, but I'm gonna wrap the tool in my hand. So I'm gonna twist, I'm gonna twist the tool in my hand. Are you guys seeing that? Your thumb comes to the left. Twist the tool in your hand, and then go straight up. Did you hear it click? I make it look really easy. It is anything but easy. If you guys nail this first pick, you're rock stars. You're probably gonna get a little frustrated. So I turn it, I come over, I hit the wheel bracket, I drop down, and then I come up on top of that bolt head. Tool stays vertical, I wrap the tool, my thumb goes to the left, and then I go straight up. Okay, this door, we don't have it on perfect flat ground, so just give it a little bit of help. Gently close these doors. Please do not let any of them slam. Have you guys ever gone to an elevator rescue and when you get the door open, you notice that there's a zip tie that's been cinched down on that locking arm? Okay, that is because that door is either a frequent flyer for the tech or it's a difficult pick and they put the zip tie on there because their tool will bump the zip tie and it's easy to grip and then push up. This would be a door that if I went on, I would put my own zip tie on there and clip the end off, okay? All right, side pick. Here we're gonna use the long side pick. Looking at this tool, everybody, what do you notice about it? You've got a lot of flex, right? This is gonna be the tool where as I come down, I'm probably not gonna feel when I hit the wheels. I'm gonna hit the wheels and I'm gonna keep coming down and I'm gonna end up hitting the tool like that. So you just gotta know, if I'm holding this up, what I'm staring at, the rest of my tool is not four inches low, it's more like six or seven, okay? So again, short side goes around the back. I've noticed that my gap here, my door's jacked up a little bit. I gotta rehab the door. So you're gonna have to kind of push it through the gap. That would not be normal. Push it through. You at the bottom, come all the way up, take it tight, and then flip my side up, back side down. That back side's probably bouncing a little bit. Give it about 10 seconds, let it stop <laughs> bouncing. And then I'm going to start to slowly come down the door. When I get to about six inches from the top, I'm probably where I need to be because the back side, I'm probably down this low already. So you just need to go from here and go straight across the door. Yep, I'm on it. I, up, I popped off. So reset, restart. Everything starts over. Back to the top. Take it tight. Flip it up, back side down. Give it a couple seconds. Start coming down. 
Straight across. Again, do not change hands. Hold with that hand. Right hand goes on the door here. Oh. Open it. Boot goes in the corner. Boot has to be all the way in the corner with the door closed. And then you've got to write this tool. Again, this is going to be a little hard to get it out, but try to bring it to a vertical position with the U at the bottom. Okay? And bring the tool out, hopefully not damaging it too much. This is a good point with that difficulty there. If you don't have stainless steel doors and you have paintable doors like you do there, what's going to happen every time that building paints their doors so they look nice, what happens with your gap here? You lose it. Okay? So I've started to have to make tools for some departments where I take just a little bit thinner gauge stainless because they have doors where the, this gap is tight, okay? So you may find that. You guys wanna see this one more time? You at the bottom, send it around the back. Take it all the way up, tight. Flip my side up, back side down, give it a few seconds to stop bouncing. Start coming down nice and slow. When I'm about six inches down, I'm figuring I'm on it. I'm gonna come straight across to my right. Flex the tool a little bit just to make sure you have it unlocked. Right hand goes on the door. Boot goes in, tool's gonna come out, so kind of jiggle it loose. Bring it to a vertical position with the U at the bottom again. And I would say for today, you guys, if, if this becomes a hassle, then just take it out the back side. Whatever works easiest for you guys. Okay? What I don't want you guys to do is to become fixated at this prop at the top pick because you don't want to feel defeated. It's a super tough pick. We have like 30 minutes together maybe until Dan's done in there. I want you guys to get as many reps as you can through. So give this one a try, but don't sit here for 10 minutes backing up the line, right? Try to get it, do the side pick, make your way around. Again, this won't be your last exposure. I'll get the props out for you next week in the LG just